Don't you dare! Open the door! Please! Don't hurt them! Please, open the door! Open the door! Dear Battle Brothers and Sisters, this is case number 30MAR2023, case name Shame Legacy. Let us hear the words of the defendants. Shame Legacy is a first-person survival horror set in a forsaken cultist village. You attempt to survive using stealth and escape. By solving puzzles, you unravel the mystery that's haunting you. <clears throat> First off, I would like to thank the developers for granting me the game key through Keymailer and those who did not see me stream in my experience, I would sum it up in the next few minutes. All of you graphic hoes out there rejoice as we are yet again starting with graphics and settings. For a game made in Unreal Engine 4, I was surprised to see very limited options to tweak and twiddle the graphical settings. On the other hand, my RTX 2070 was able to handle the game on epic settings smoothly like a space marine would a drunk chaos cultist. Another big compliment on my end is regarding language bugs, since Shame Legacy provides subtitles in amazing 13 most common high gothic dialects – Chinese, simplified Chinese, English, French, German, Italian, Japanese, Korean, Polish, Brazil Portuguese, Spanish, Spanish for Latin America, and Turkish. Since this product is intended for consoles as well, you have the option to play it with mouse and keyboard or gamepad. But Shame Legacy is sadly true to its name and for unknown reasons the developers decided to use nearly all the gaming scenes in the galaxy, so for the purposes of this review I am starting a gaming scene counter just to keep track. And the very first scene on the list is inability to rebind the keys. Like a guardsman who is handled cracked last gun before the assault, you make do with what you have or tough to the soldier. Come on, fairy ship games, this is not a triple H title where we are used to such corner cutting. But if you are a motion blur and bloom effect enjoyers, we got you covered, fam. <laughs> music and sound effects are a truly mixed bag of surprises. The music is amazing. It fits the game and it's creating proper atmosphere, whether it should be panic or tension. Many games does not get this right, but Shame Legacy does. Sadly, it all falls off with mediocre to low voice acting. You can tell the guy voicing William, our main protagonist, is trying his best, like a one-legged servitor. He really is pouring his heart and soul into the project, which is commendable. But you can tell he's not a proper voice actor, as per Prosecution's Exhibit 1A. Don't you dare! Open the door! Please! Don't hurt them! Please! Open the door! Open the door! Villagers are voiced alright for an indie game, but props goes to the priest, who shines like an astronomicon through the warp, although I am unsure if this is because he's a good actor or just everyone else is so bad. Also, side question, why does the priest look like a cross between Judas Priest singer Rob Halford and the main antagonist from Far Cry 5? Anyway, last but not least, whoever is responsible for the sound engineering should be kicked up the ass with a steel-toed boot, because they butchered the sound like a ravenous tyrannid warrior unleashed on a kindergarten. Sometimes people sound as if they were right behind you, while in reality they are far away, other times they sound as if they were trapped in a huge iron cauldron with a tin lid on it, and every time someone screams or roars, the sound cuts off because the recording equipment was not set up properly. Let me prove my point with Exhibit 7B. The house is on fire! Amy, where are you? Since this could have been one of the saving graces of the game, the only word I can say to describe my disappointment is... shame. Shame. The story itself is not half bad. While it would certainly not win any Pulitzer for writing, it is serviceable. Sadly, it starts with the usual trope of every bad storytelling – amnesia. Seriously, if I got one Imperial credit every time a book, movie or a game starts with amnesia, I could buy myself a nice backwater feudal world by now and become a Kingquisitor. Mommy, mommy, what's it for? Mommy, mommy, tell me more. Bring it to the corner shop to buy yourself a lolly. Still, for the purpose of this game, and given all the stuff that I am going to mention soon, this is very low on the sin list. 
All I can divulge about the story is that you wake up in the middle of nowhere and find out that the whole village of crazed cultists is looking for you for a reason explained later. Sadly, as with many walking simulators, the story is hardwired like a space marine within Dreadnought and you are not allowed to do any decisions of your own. William makes his own decisions and every time something happens, the controls are yoinked from you like a shiny gubbin gets taken from a knob by the war boss. While this could work, it would require better writing. In this case, it is a hugely squandered opportunity to make players care about William and get immersed. As a passive viewer, I often disagreed with his choices or would react differently. And since I never got any information about who William really is and whether he is a good, emperor-fearing human being or despicable chaos-obedient wretch, I never really started to care about him. What a shame. Oh, fuck. I can't believe you've done this. After my initial happiness that this game does not have the annoying, ever-present objective marker, I soon realized it is because there is only one way forward. Exploration is pointless like trying to please Asian parents, as it always ends with hastily put together barricades and extremely obvious invisible walls. Any document or item you are meant to find is being put in front of you and throughout the game you encounter hundreds of dead bodies. Indication that either this slaughter has been unnoticed for centuries, which is unlikely, or, as I assume, it is just because developers went by the rule more bodies and gore equals more horror, which is never the case. Objection, your owner! Inquisitor is speculating! I withdraw my last remark. My apologies. The stealth sections where you are trying to avoid insane cultists could have been great. You have the option to hide in the outhouses or big wooden boxes and peek outside to see when the danger is gone. Great mechanic that has proven itself in other games like Penumbra or Amnesia. But with abominable intelligence being blind like an astropath outside of Astronomicon's reach, they rarely see you and I personally use these mechanics only twice in the whole game. And the second time I used it, the AI still found me, although it glitched and nothing happened. Please see Exhibit 6C. I heard something. He must be here. When caught, you get to play a minigame where you can defend yourself. I have to give props to the developers for trying something new, although the execution is once again very bad. There is no tension in this. The timer is so generous that I literally had time to grab a drink from fridge come back and still finish the defense in time to free myself and run away. After a while, this mechanics gets quite annoying. Lastly, if you get caught close to a house, just run. The indomitable door must have been built by imperial fists themselves, because no cultist can open them and follow you inside. On top of that, they have an attention span of an average TikTok viewer, so they instantly forget you and go back to their patrol. To break the monotony, Stealth sections are often followed by chasing sequences. Here, a fiery demon that looks like a blood letter from Wish.com is running after you. First chase was kind of exciting, but every consecutive one got more and more boring, disappointing and obnoxious. This is mainly because, as with the whole game, you literally run through one long corridor with no option to deviate. Sometimes there is also a button to press, but that is hardly exciting. And after all this ordeal, there are also puzzles. Puzzles that an org after squeak brain transplant could solve. Need a key to the door. It's right in front of you next to the candle. Need to open the red gem. No. Turn the dial on a statue towards the red gem, not the blue. At the beginning, there was one room where you have to find the key in a cobweb and burn it away, but you never see these mechanics again. Makes me wonder whether the devs were running out of time to implement more hidden objects, minigames and proper puzzles, or that they just could not be asked with these. But the worst part of this experience are the scripted events. Everything waits for you, and to add insult to injury, it is so blatantly obvious, to the point I will give it two sin points. If you knock the villager down, he will not get up until you move certain distance from him. If something is on fire, you can sit around and enjoy the view as per the exhibit 7E. What is the purpose of this? Why ruin the tension and fun by making everything obviously fake and boring? 
Seriously, this game had a great potential if not for all these issues. And for a game that costs 20 Imperial credits, it is impossible for me to wholeheartedly recommend it. What an absolute shame. Everyone still watching, thank you very much for your everlasting loyalty to the gaming inquisition and for this deed of fealty let me reward you with my final verdict. Dear Battle Brothers and Sisters, after four and a half hours of gameplay, which was enough to finish the whole game by the way, I proclaim Shame Legacy a wasted potential of a game. Kudos to the Fairy Ship Games for trying to innovate walking simulator genre and making it more interesting, but this game falls flat in basically everything it was trying to achieve. But their hearts and minds were in the right place, so hopefully they will learn from this experience and I am looking forward to their next title. As for the gamers, better stay away from this one. As always, thank you for your valuable time spent seeing this process into its bitter end and hopefully I will see you at the next ruling. Have a nice rest of your time zone and don't forget that the Emperor protects!